I get asked frequently how to get our spouse to participate in the decluttering, to get them on board with this whole minimalism journey. And that's a very legitimate question. But if you're in that place where you're asking that, I would encourage you to check your motives and why you're asking. I say that because I know myself. I had wanted to blame my husband for the state of our home. Was he messy? Yeah. Did he leave stuff out everywhere? Yeah. Did he collect random things? Yes, <laughs> a lot of it. But so did I. The house wasn't a mess because of him. It was all of us. It was him, it was the kids, it was me, it was, it was all of our habits. But convincing him to fix all of his bad habits was a pretty hard task when he already saw me in all of my bad habits. But when we're ready to make a change, what do we do? The first step is to talk to them. I say this because I didn't talk. I had to learn to, sh to share what was on my mind. And how can my husband know that I want to embrace minimalism if I don't talk about it? Oh, gosh. Sitting down to watch YouTube videos together or a minimalist documentary. I liked the latest one, Less Is Now. That's a great place to start. Some of the more motivating ones are home tours, just so you can get an idea of what a minimalist home looks like. And if you want to see our home tour, I'll, I'll put the link up in the corner. I think it's this corner. <laughs> and I'll put it in the description below as well. Take a little bit of time to think for yourself. Like, just consider for yourself what's motivating you. Like, what is drawing you to minimalism? How would your everyday life change? What would that look like? What would you do with your extra time? How would it change the things you talk about day to day? How would it help you save money? How does the clutter affect your mental and emotional state? If you have some of these concrete thoughts for yourself, then you can sit down and share them. Ask, ask them what they think. Ask them what they think of the state of the home right now, what they would like to have in the home or how they would like to spend their time or the, the money that you'll be saving. What would you do with it? Many times the motivation to embrace minimalism comes from a, a need to feel some calm in the house, to not be overwhelmed, which I understand. I felt like I needed to embrace minimalism just because I was, I was overwhelmed. I was struggling with depression and anxiety. And there was just so much stress in my life and it was really because of the stuff. It's important for your spouse to know that clutter has a negative impact on your life. And with embracing minimalism, you're wanting to improve your mental health, your mental well-being. In embracing minimalism, you're aiming to eliminate a lot of the stress, a lot of the arguments, and whatever else you know is just tied to the amount of stuff that you have that you're surrounded with. 120 volt, 60, H, Z, A, C only. I wonder if I have that sort of light bulb. 660 watt, 250 volt. I didn't think about buying a light bulb. Okay, no, no, it should work. Look, these bulbs, these, these bulbs look normal. <laughs> Get a light bulb. Then there's coming up with agreements. While you're talking to them, let them know that you're not going to get rid of any of their stuff. I probably need to put this on the lamp first and then screw the light bulb onto it. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> so you're not gonna get rid of any of their stuff without their permission. That's very important. And then determine together where things should be stored. 
So the most, one of the most helpful rules that I implemented into our home is that no personal things are stored in communal areas. So that means like here in the living room, we don't store personal things. This is not the place to store craft projects or supplies, uh, personal books, hobby stuff, whatever it is, everything in this space should be communally used. So it makes sense that we have a TV in here or whatever media because this is where it gets used by everyone in the home. And what I found when I was working on this is that it was me. Most of the stuff that I was storing in the communal areas was my stuff. So I had to either figure out where I was gonna put it. Was I going to make a space downstairs so I could actually store that downstairs? Or was I going to eliminate it because I didn't actually use it and free up space to just simply live in the space? After all the communal areas were decluttered, then the house was so much easier to manage. And it didn't bother me so much that Brian had boxes of comic books in the basement because the main parts of the house where we lived, where company visited, all of that was easy for me now. And if you are married to someone who loves clutter, who collects all kinds of things and doesn't want to get rid of any of it, then figure out a space that can be theirs. Talk, when you're talking about it, talk about what space can be theirs that they can have complete control over, that they can put everything that they want in and you're not going to mess with it. Would that be a garage, an office, a spare bedroom? And make it reasonable from their perspective. This way they can have their things, they can be in control of it, and you don't have to see it, you don't have to deal with it. And you can maintain the common areas how you would like them. Oh, oh, I did it wrong. See this? It's, it's up. There it is, look at that. Helps if I read directions. It's even just a picture. <laughs> it wouldn't have been that hard. So, work on yourself first. That's the last thing I wanted to talk to you about. We can really only change ourselves and we can only work on ourselves. It's easy to blame other people and think, well, I can't keep a clean house because my collect husband collects so much stuff. And yeah, okay, so he collects stuff. But we can declutter our own things. And if you've already talked to your husband and come up with a plan for where he can keep his collections, then the rest of the house should be free to be decluttered. And if he is not happy about it, uh, like for instance, if you're getting rid of things and he sees all this stuff going out that, you know what, this was, this was paid for, we paid good money for this and now you're just getting rid of it, remind him about what you talked about. Remind him of your mental well-being, the state of your home, what you anticipate. And it's okay if you get rid of things now that you've spent money on. Embracing a uh, more minimalist lifestyle means that you will end up spending less money. You will be saving so much more money. That does look better, doesn't it? <laughs> and the things that you have in your home right now aren't helping you. You're no, as someone said in my group this week, you're no poorer if you get rid of them and you're no richer if you keep them. I don't recommend sneaking around and getting rid of things just on the sly. I gotta see, I gotta see where I want this. I want this as a reading light. Okay. But it might be easier to declutter when he's not around. This is gonna take some effort. Whew. If I came to anything in my decluttering that I felt I needed his input on, then I would set it aside and ask him about it before I did anything with it. My, my situation was a little easier since I did most of the cooking and I was home all day. Pretty much everything in the house was free reign. Like I could just declutter whatever I wanted in the kitchen because it didn't affect him. Should have brought my notes up here. The garage on the other hand was a completely different matter. That was a lot of his stuff a lot of his grandparents, 
like his grandpa's stuff because when his grandpa passed away he got a lot of the tools and a lot of the garage things so i had to wait until he was ready until he was on board willing to make those kind of decisions remember to keep the focus on yourself you're the one here seeking help you're the one working to change your home and ready to do the work to make those changes. Since you're the one here watching a YouTube video on, on how to accomplish this, then I would guess that your spouse isn't bothered so much by the state of the home, that they were probably quite content with the way things were and saw no need of a change. That's the way it was in my situation. My husband didn't mind the dishes being dirty in the sink or things on every surface or it just, it didn't bother him at all. It was me. I wanted the change. I was embarrassed of the home. I, I wanted something different. And we can either play the victim and bemoan our spouse's messiness or we can decide to take initiative and make a change and do it for ourselves. Oh, this is just sheetrock. The other one got into wood. In the beginning, it looks like we'll be doing a lot of it ourselves. All, you know, the chores and everything. And is that fair? No. But if you look at it from their perspective, they've been living their life, happy with the way things have been, and all of a sudden we say, hey, I want to change. And now I want you to do the dishes twice a day. Does that feel fair to them? No. So you lead by example. And after you work for a while, oh, not easy. <laughs> after you work for a while, talk to them about it again. Ask them how they feel about the changes that you've made in the home. Anyway, ask them to participate. Tell them what that would look like. Ask them what they want that to look like. I just really can't get this seam straight. Oh, oh, I did it. Okay. Anyway, if you want to set up a system, I do have charts and checklists. They're completely editable PDFs of what you need to do, uh, what we all need to do on a daily and weekly basis. Those are the home reset checklists that we made and I'll put the link in the video description below. Oh, I gotta change this. That looks really tacky. <sighs> Look at that. I gotta figure out how to make that look nicer. <laughs> Be a lot easier if I drill the hole first. Okay. All the way down there. Not bad. There. Now I can sit in this corner and read and see what I'm reading. <laughs> Changing my everyday habits was one of the most transformative things that I have done in my life, in my home. And for me, because I had such bad habits and I was such, I was just in a state of messiness and overwhelmed with the whole aspect of getting the house under control, I had to limit it. I had to keep it so basic that I could do it and, um, and I wasn't requiring too much of myself because when I had this huge long list of chores to do every day, I didn't want to do them. I would just, I would not do them. So I had to keep it very, very simple so that I would do it, so that I would develop a habit. And it took me longer than I would have anticipated. You know, they say, oh, it just takes 21 days to establish a habit. But I was in such a habit of leaving stuff out everywhere and not cleaning up after myself, not cleaning up regularly ever uh, for so much of my life that I don't know, it, it took me longer than 21 days to establish a habit. I enjoyed it, I enjoyed the results, 
much sooner than 21 days. It was only a couple days in and I was like, this is amazing. But to really get that habit firm, um, it took me quite a few months. And if you want to see which three habits I focused on during those first three months to just keep it easy enough for me to do, you can check out this video right here.